To tackle our next panel, every vote counts, especially when the counts are rigged. Please welcome former Nevada Attorney General Adam Laxalt, former U.S. Senator Norm Coleman, Hamid Dillon, and Trent England. All right, good morning, everybody. How we doing? Are we excited to have the president here today or what? Well, uh, I lost a very tough election for a gubernatorial race in 2018. And uh, some of it will be due to the things that we're going to discuss today. But I can assure you, unlike Stacey Abrams, I do not pretend like I'm the governor of Nevada. <laughs> So we will, we will start with Senator Coleman who's going to give you a real world example of how tough this business can be and how the Democrats can sometimes do whatever it takes to win an election. Senator. So uh, by, by the way, Democrats cheat, in case that's an eye opener, they, they cheat. It's my race 2008, election night, uh, 2.9 million votes. I'm up by 725 votes. They check out the next day I wake up, and there were apparently irregularities in just Democrat precincts, and now I'm up by 225 votes. About three, two months later, they do a recount. They check all the machines, and I'm up by over 200 votes. But then they decide to count votes that weren't counted on election night, and about nine months later, uh, Al Franken's sitting in that seat by 312 votes. Four examples. Four examples and four things we can do. First. Uh, in 19 precincts, all Democrat precincts, there were more votes than voters. We, we need folks to be at the polls. You've got to show up. Uh, number, number, number two, uh, don't let George Soros elect your Secretary of State, because he does that. He does that, and we've got to win down ballots. There were 1,099 felons that voted in that documented election, almost all in heavily Democrat precincts. It doesn't work. Three. Same-day registration without voter ID is an invitation to cheat, and the Democrats cheat. We've got to get voter ID. There were 525,000 same-day voters in Minnesota. No voter ID required. One person can sit in a precinct, have a school bus filled with, with college kids, whatever, come in, and he can vouch for every one of those. You've got you to get voter ID. Uh, and number four, you've got to have uniform standards. Uh, in, in one Minnesota case, Minnesota law requires that Absentee ballots be witnessed by registered voters. Republicans follow the law. So in one re heavily Republican county, I had 181 ballots that were disqualified because the person who witnessed the absentee ballot wasn't a registered vote. I got about 65% of the vote in, that, pre in that, 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 that county. There were three Democrat counties that had 20 times the number of votes. 20 times, a million and a half. Not a single ballot was disqualified why not? Because it wasn't having a registered voter witness. So you probably had 3,600 ballots, 3,600 that proportionally should have been disqualified, not a single one. And so in the end, you've got to make sure that you have uniform requirements. They, they, we, our folks will follow the law. They're going to cheat, and you've got to have a uniform standard. Last thing is i just got to tell you, elections have consequences. If Al Franken isn't in that seat, we don't have Obamacare, okay? If Al Franken isn't in that seat, Barack Obama doesn't to get, get a, a, to spend a trillion dollar stimulus, which stimulated nothing more than increasing the national debt. So elections have consequences. Don't let them cheat us. Thank you. Al. Well, the senator just gave some examples of, a, of an actual election. Um, I think what we want to move to next is how the Democrats change the system to make sure they can win races. And unfortunately, we've seen more and more of this in the last many years, including in my state, where you've got multiple weeks of early vote, and they just added same-day registration on election day. Um, and so Harmeet is a, a specialist in this, and she's going to discuss what she's seeing in California and elsewhere. Well, thank you, everybody. First of all, how many of us think that Donald Trump is going to win the election? Okay. Well. 
hold that thought. The fact that we have the best candidate with the best plan for the future, with the best voters, and the best, uh, and, and, the, and the best vision for the future of our country is not going to be enough because Democrats do game the system, they change the system, and they're stealing our vote legally. Uh, Norm gave some examples of how it would happen in some ways that may be very questionable. But Republicans have stood by and allowed same-day voter registration, as you mentioned, Adam. They've allowed uh, no voter ID. Less than a third of our states actually have voter ID, whether it's a strong system or a weak system. Uh, Republicans have allowed so-called nonpartisan redistricting commissions that are effectively run by Democrats because Democrats cheat. Democrats hijack that process. We've had that problem in California. In California, it was a Republican donor who put in a top two primary system, which has effectively disenfranchised voters throughout the state of California. And we are now down to less than 25% of our legislature being Republican in that state. When you have this toxic combination of a lack of verification, a lack of enforcement by our attorneys general and Department of Justice with respect to purging the polls of dead voters and voters who have moved and voters who are felons and voters who have no business being on the rolls, you set up a system where fraud can occur. But quite apart from fraud, we have systematic things that are going on like ballot harvesting. In California, ballot harvesting caused the loss of half of our Republican congressional delegation in 2018. And it's coming to states near you. We had HR1. Can you, uh, can you explain ballot harvesting to everyone? Absolutely. So ballot harvesting is, a, in my opinion, violation of one man, one vote. It is a situation where, in a vote by mail state, where you can request a no excuse ballot to be voted um, by mail and mailed in, in states like California and Nevada, others, we have 30 days of voting. So in California, where Super Tuesday is on March 3rd, people have already been voting for the last 27 days. And we have unions and other community organizers who go around and gather up the ballots, and they will go to a nursing home and gather up all of the ballots there. They will help you fill out the ballot, and as a result, a number of people who might not have voted, who aren't sure, who hadn't made up their mind, their ballot is taken by a liberal community organizer. Now, on our side, Republicans aren't that eager to give up their ballots, so it is definitely a liberal phenomenon that's happening, and that has occurred a massive shift in the outcomes of elections. Well, Democrats want to do that nationwide. The HR1 uh, legislation that Nancy Pelosi put in as her first piece of signature legislation in the 2018 uh, Congress was exactly that. They wanted to make DC a state. They want to enable this uh, nationwide uh, vote harvesting type of a situation. And they want to change the law systematically to make sure that there's no verification uh, our NVR, National Voter Registration Act and Help America Vote Act, which requires certain minimal standards with respect to cleaning the, uh, cleaning the voter rolls, uh, does not occur. And as a result of these laws, we are going to see well-meaning Republicans get steamrolled every time. Now, a little known fact is that Republicans at the national level, the Republican National Committee, which I sit on as a representative from California, we've had our hands tied for over three decades. We, I think naively agreed to a consent decree in a single election back in, uh, in over 30 years ago. And for the last 30 years, we've been under a consent decree preventing the Republican National Committee from doing uh, election day operations. That consent decree only expired a little over a year ago after the judge died, who had been renewing it year after year. And so now we're finally geared up to do that. But meanwhile, the Democrats, through numerous groups, Priorities USA, and even liberal allies like the American Civil Liberties Union and others, they engage in systematic litigation throughout the United States. And I call that sue until blue. They sue. They keep the polls open. Adam can tell you that happened in uh, his election. They keep the polls open hours later in Democratic districts. Republicans don't have a team of election lawyers there, historically have not had that, to go in and prevent that and make sure that the same rules are applied throughout. So in this election cycle, definitely we have Republicans who are more vigilant about these issues and conservatives who want to make sure. But this is not a problem that is simply relegated to the Republicans. Actually, Bernie Sanders supporters are complaining in California that because of the way their system is set up, where we have some of the two most popular count populous counties, LA County and Orange County, in this election for the first time in this primary, are all vote by mail. So there's so-called voting centers. Everybody gets a ballot by mail. So voter ballot harvesting, that's going to be occurring on a massive scale. 
A lot of the voters in California are in independent voters. That's the most fast-growing segment of the population. Unless you, elect, unless you request a partisan ballot, a Democrat ballot in that election, you're not going to get it. And so a lot of the Democratic voters are going to find that they're not able to vote for the Democrat of their choice, which is probably going to be Bernie Sanders for most of those on Tuesday. Um, in our Republican primary, we still restrict that in California only to Republicans voting, which I think is something that all of you should think about in your states as well. We really don't want Democrats picking who our Republican nominee is, uh, much as some people are suggesting we do that on the Democratic side. So I think we have many problems, and if we lose this election, it isn't going to be because we didn't have the best candidate with the best plan and vision for the future and the uh, best campaign operation. We have all of those things. But Democrats cheat. And so we need to be very vigilant in this 2020 election. Thank you. Well, I have, I have two thoughts about that. One, why is it that when, whenever there's a dead voter, it's always a Democrat? It's always a Democrat. That's right. And my other comment is, you mean to tell me they're rigging the system against <laughs> Bernie? I don't believe it. Yeah. You're going to see a lot of unhappy Bernie bros in California on Tuesday, I promise you. So Harmeet shared the ways over the last decade or more that, that the Democrats have been gaming the entire system, and they've been doing it through law and through statute, which is something we need to be more vigilant against. Um, but I, I want to bring up a, a larger scale issue that, that we face in the future, and that is hopefully everyone has heard of the national popular vote. Has everyone heard of the national popular vote? So this is an effort by the left, and unfortunately there are some Republicans that have been supporting this effort uh, to get rid of our electoral college. The, the system that our founders put in with great wisdom so that each state would have a voice, and so that, you know, it's amazing, it's a couple hundred years have passed, and it's like they could see that the last thing in the world we'd want is two large populous states like California and New York to decide all of our elections. And so those of you that are not following that, I encourage you to follow it because uh, it's a real threat and something that would really hurt our system. But I want to turn to Trent to talk about how that system will be ripe with fraud and would take all of these things we're talking about and put them on steroids. Absolutely. So uh, it sounds like we've got a friendly crowd, but let's make sure. Who, who, here, who here loves the Electoral College? I mean, this, you know, this is a structure. When you go back and you read the records of the Constitutional Convention, you find, you know, we hear about the compromise that created Congress and all these fierce arguments they had. You know what they spent more time, at least more, more weeks on than anything else, was figuring out how to elect a president. They actually, in the very first week they took it up, and they debated all kinds of different ideas. And eventually, over the course of several months, they developed the Electoral College. And, and actually, at the end of the convention, this was one of the parts of, of the Constitution that was basically popular with everybody. Even the anti-federalists, who didn't like a lot of things in the Constitution, said, this is a pretty good system. And, and it's, exactly, it's exactly that, because it forces some checks and balances in presidential elections. It makes sure that we don't have a system that is you know, democratic with a small d in name only. Right? It makes sure we don't have a system where, sure, you all can vote, but unless you live on the coasts, in the big cities, you don't really have a say. Right? It makes sure to balance all of this out. Now, that's great, and as I said, you know, at the, at the beginning of our country, pretty much everybody was happy with that. But if you are a political party, just hypothetically, where most of your support comes from the coasts, and not just from the coast, but just from the big cities on the coasts, then you look at a system like this with checks and balances and you say, I don't like this. Right? This isn't fair to us. This forces us to listen to a lot of people in places like Wisconsin and Pennsylvania and Michigan and Ohio. We don't want to go talk to those people. Right? Why, why should we have to leave San Francisco and LA and New York and go out and crisscross the country and talk to the unwashed masses? 
When, when, when people talk about national popular vote, that is what you should hear, right? What they are talking about is trying to rig the system to undo the work of the American founders and, and create a political environment where they can systematically and permanently disenfranchise small town and rural Americans, people in flyover country, places like Oklahoma where I live. Right? This, this, is, this is a travesty and it's very real. They are 73% of the way to enacting national popular vote. Let me explain just briefly what that is and then talk about these consequences. Because what national popular vote ultimately is about is taking all of these bad ideas that we've heard about here and forcing them on the whole country, right? Taking California style election laws and forcing them on the entire country. Right, but what is national popular vote? So one of the things that, that the other side will say about this, and, and actually there were some national popular vote lobbyists here a couple of days ago at CPAC um, trying to, to, to spread disinformation. And one of the things that they'll say is, well, we're not really trying to abolish the Electoral College. Here's how their, here's how their plan works. They have a, a, a law that they take to state legislatures that changes how presidential electors are selected. Right? It, it basically gives away a state's electoral votes. Not, not, you know, today, your state's electoral votes are based on how the people vote in your own state, right? Makes sense, right? This would give away your state's electoral votes based on the national popular vote. In other words, it would make sure that if this was in effect in 2016, Hillary Clinton would have won. If this was in effect in 2000, Al Gore would have won. Right? That's the idea, to force the Electoral College to become sort of a zombie part of the Constitution that is forced to rubber stamp the popular vote result. It's a way to effectively abolish the Electoral College without going through the hard, honest work of trying to change the Constitution. And if they did that, right, they would force chaos and fraud into presidential elections in a way we've never experienced because they could steal elections by stealing votes in Los Angeles or in Chicago, right? Today, all they can do in Chicago is steal Illinois, and all they can do in LA is steal California, right? The Electoral College uses state lines like the watertight compartments on an ocean liner. This would break down those compartments and allow them to steal elections from the big cities on the coast, right? And <clears throat> let, me, let, me, let me conclude with this. As I mentioned, there, there were some national popular vote lobbyists actually here. They have a group. There's like. There's like three people who claim to be conservatives who support national popular vote. And so they created a group called Conservatives for National Popular Vote. Now, they're, they're paid for by the Soros family and other people like that. But, uh, but, you know, CPAC's big on straw polls. Let's take a straw poll right now. Because I bet those lobbyists are in the room. That's my guess. They're probably here, right? Let, 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 me, let me just ask you, I, I want to ask if, if CPAC supports the Electoral College or if CPAC supports national popular vote. You can just let those lobbyists know where we are. Does CPAC support the Electoral College? Yes. Yeah. Okay. And, and for, the, for the lobbyists that the Soros family is paid to be in the room, does CPAC support the national popular vote? No. There we go. <laughs> well, if, if you don't mind, um, after trying to help lay the, the battlefield for what this thing looks like, just go through, and, and any of you can comment on this, what a recount looks like. How does this actually go down? So, so I, I got it. By the way, I got to tell you what a small world is. So Trent worked, uh, Dino Rossi, who was running for governor of uh, uh, Washington before uh, I had my race, the same team. And by the way, he had the same circumstance. He was winning election night. He won when the machines are recounted. He loses in a recount. Same team that did Rossi race, same team did my race, but the same team did Fusion GPS and the Steele dossier. Same folks. So you, you can tell the, the ethical standard yeah. that they're dealing with. President Bush once said to me that one of his biggest concerns was that they were going to keep counting till they won. Mm -hmm. okay? That's what they do, right? And if the Supreme Court hadn't stopped it, thank God, okay, what would the outcome? So one of the things about recounts okay, uh, is that the other side tries to keep, whether it's harvesting votes, we won by big margins in California in a lot of those races, and all of a sudden it changes. Right. So you got to have a system in which uh, one vote, one eligible vote per voter, that's it, uh, and, and make sure that you get the results and, and, and that's it. Don't let them keep counting until they win. And can I add to that, um, 
Forget recounts, we have provisional ballots. The provisional ballot system, which comes in with the same day registration, uh, results in Orange County races, which we had held. We win them on election night, and then the Democrats keep counting, and they find some ballots, and they find some more ballots, and these are provisional ballots, which are supposed by the Secretary of State to be verified. Is this person eligible to vote? Is this person not a felon? Is this person a citizen? None of that really happens, and we can't require that, unfortunately. And so what happens is you have, it happens in some red counties as well, but in California, there is really no compliance with the National Voter Registration Act, and there's no verification of whether people are citizens. This is in a state with three million illegal aliens estimated, so we don't know who's voting in our elections. Across the country, county registrars do not purge the polls of dead people, felons, people who have moved, even though they're supposed to be a national database, or at least statewide databases maintained of this information, they're not maintained, and nobody's holding their feet to the fire. This is how Democrats win elections after Election Day. Well, well, well Lyndon Baines Johnson, th this story is not as known as it should be, but uh, he had his 1948 U.S. Senate election, and he was down at the close of that day, and at least back then, in, t in, in that part of Texas, he could make a phone call and he could buy more votes. And they could literally <laughs> stuff more ballots. And he ended up winning that race by a couple hundred votes statewide. And like the senator said, elections have consequences, right? Had he not won that race, we never would have had LBJ as the president or the Great Society. Um, and so this is why this stuff matters so much, and it's why it matters that you all are vigilant and, and, and trying to be engaged in this process. Adam, let me, on that note, I, I, I want to give you a mindset that I want you to leave here with, because it's really important that we walk out here, not just hearing you know, a bunch of presentations, but you say, what, what can I do? How motivated can I be? 12th century Jewish philosopher, rabbi, teacher, Maimonides, once said, each of us should view ourselves as if the world were held in balance, and any single act of goodness on our part could tip the scales. My friends, the world is held in balance today. Donald Trump, Bernie Sanders, literally. And the single act of goodness is being a poll watcher, not letting him cheat. And the single act of goodness is making sure George Soros doesn't pick your Secretary of State. So you can, the world will change with the wrong result. And a single act of goodness is going from here and being involved and making sure we, we win fair and free elections. We win those elections. So Trent, I keep trying to give you a shot to uh, talk about the, the doomsday scenario of us losing the Electoral College and what a nationwide recount would look like. Yeah, no, that, that's, that's right. I mean, the Electoral College has prevented us from ever needing a nationwide recount, even though we've had presidential races that were decided by as little as under 10,000 votes. I mean, imagine if you were around then, Florida times 50, right? And imagine a situation where, you know, again, they, they can churn out votes in places where there are almost no Republicans, right? I mean, there are precincts in Chicago, and there are precincts in New York, and there are precincts in Los Angeles where there are almost no Republicans, right? And there's almost no oversight. And, I mean, Harmeet's doing such good work trying to uh, trying to address some of these policy issues, and, and you know, we have got to find lawyers and poll watchers and people to go into these places, but it is, it is hard work the way it is right now. And the left knows if they can wipe away state lines, if they can get rid of the Electoral College, they can create a situation where I just, I don't know if there are enough Republican attorneys, right, and Republican poll watchers who are willing to put on flak jackets and go into some of these precincts. Right, and make sure that the vote is fair. I mean, it, it would be a disaster. So I got to tell you, in, in law in Minnesota requires two parties to be in, in a precinct overlooking. So in, in places in Minneapolis, the two parties are the Democrat Party, the Democrat Party, and the Green Party. I mean, so, so it's not enough even to have the law. We got to have folks who, who put on the flak jackets. Okay, it's not pleasant. It's not fun. Okay, but yeah. go on. There. Everybody ready to do that here? Are you ready to do it? Yeah. yeah. And if I can add that. Poll watching is necessary, but not sufficient. We need an army of lawyers out there. I'll give you one statistic. Anybody heard about the law firm Perkins Coie? That's, that's the... Right? Perkins Coie, according to my recent review of FEC reports, has received over $70 million over the last couple of election cycles. 
to do litigation on behalf of a panoply of different liberal organizations. And, and Republicans expect their lawyers to volunteer, you know, uh, take two days off and go do some poll watching at the end of the day. That doesn't work. These guys are systematically prepared. So when you're being asked to help and how can you help, one is to volunteer to be a poll watcher, but the other is to make sure if, if somebody in your state or at the federal level is saying we need funds to make sure that we are prepared to, to go head to head and dollar to dollar with George Soros and his minions, that you're able to help with that, please help with that as well because you can give all the money to the best candidate and we're gonna lose if we don't have a system in place to make sure that Democrats are stopped this time and that they, we begin to turn the tide. Because one day, you may be living with California's <laughs> illegality and filth and everything else on your streets if we don't stop this this year. The, the American founders were so smart. They focused on structures, right? They knew that the structures eventually produce the political outcomes. And we have been far too focused on political outcomes unless we take the structures seriously and protect our elections, protect our electoral college, we will lose our country. Well, I just want to close with a call to action, which is people in this audience care about this issue. I know that because in my state, our people care about this issue. We care about the fundamental fairness, and so find ways to engage. This year, I anticipate there will be more activity across the country as we get organized nationally to try to make sure we have poll watchers and lawyers and other things to be able to help. And I encourage one other thing. File complaints with the Secretary of State's office. Everybody talks about it and they complain about it. And I can tell you, most Secretary of State's office are complaint-based. They don't just go around investigating. You have to actually file. And you may think your voice isn't heard, or your case may be the one that opens up a serious amount of voter fraud. Thank you all. God bless. Thank you. Okay.